camera's still going, so hopefully we're okay. Um, but let's look at another example. On this one, that said find the unknown values. There's more than one here. So they have E, F, and then C that they're trying to find. And the information they gave us was we know the altitude is 4.8. They gave this leg of the big triangle as eight long, and then the shorter leg is six long. And so we're going to use that to find our missing pieces. So again, I'm gonna draw the three triangles. We have the small one, we have our middle sized one, and then we have the entire big triangle. And I'm gonna draw them all facing the same direction. So I'm gonna put that little right triangle in the corner. Here's the middle one, and then the big one. Okay, so let's label just the small one first. So the small one, we don't know the short base. I knew I know the longer leg is 4.8, so that's gonna match up with this piece right here. And I know the hypotenuse is six, so that's gonna go there. Now let's do the middle triangle this one right here from A to D to C. On this one, we know the short side is 4.8. So that's gonna go on the bottom. And then the hypotenuse is eight long. We don't know this one. So maybe we'll let, label the letter that's E. On this one, this was F, let's put that there as well. And then we have our big triangle. So the big triangle, the short leg is six. So that's gonna go on the bottom. The long leg is eight. And then we don't know this hypotenuse C. So again, I know it's kind of weird thinking of taking these triangles and turning them so they're all facing the same direction. But I do think that's a really good way to make sure that you're setting your fractions up right. Because we need to make sure if I use this side of this triangle, I need to use this side or if I use the bottom I need to use the bottom so just taking that second to redraw all of the triangles facing the same direction will really help you to not make any mistakes there so we have three things we're trying to find they want to know E F and C so we're looking for E we're looking for F we're looking for C so let's try and set up what we do know so looking at our little triangle we don't know what F is on the middle triangle, we don't know E, and then on the big triangle, we don't know C. So we're gonna have to kind of do a combination of all three triangles. <laughs> My baby is crying, hopefully you guys can't hear. Um, but we're gonna use a combination of all three triangles to find those three missing parts. So I see here on this first triangle, I know these two. And then I, if I look at the second triangle, I know this hypotenuse, but I don't know the leg, but I do have a pair here that I can work with. So I'm gonna set up a fraction using the 4.8 and the six. So let's do 4.8 over six, and then we're gonna set it equal to the same two sides in this triangle. So since the 4.8 was on the top, I need to do the E on the top here over six, or sorry, eight, not six. So then on this one, we're going to cross multiply again. So we're gonna get bottom times top. So six times E is six E. And then 4.8 times eight is 38.4. And then solving for E, we need to get rid of that six by dividing by six. So divide those. And 38.4 divided by six is equal to 6.4. So E is equal to 6.4. So there's one of our answers. And then the nice thing is we can now use that number and label this triangle right here. So this middle triangle has all three sides. So we can use all three of these sides to help us find the other missing pieces. So we still need to find F, we still need to find C. So let's go find F first using these two triangles again. So I'm gonna pick, you could do either side really. You could do the 4.8 or the six. Um, let's do the six since it's not a decimal. I can do six over F. And then since I use these two sides in this triangle, I need to use these two sides in the middle triangle. So the six was on top, so that means the eight needs to go on top. And then the F was on the bottom, so the 4.8 needs to go on the bottom. And then more cross multiplying, so bottom times top, we're gonna get F times eight is eight F. 
and then 6 times 4.8 is equal to 28.8. And then solving for f, we just need to divide by 8. So 28.8 divided by 8 is equal to 3.6. So f is equal to 3.6. So now we have this small piece figured out. And I'll go label it over here too. So this triangle's done, this triangle's done. Now all we have left to do is the big one. So we're looking for C here. So there are two options. You could set up another fraction or we know what E and F are. If I know what both of these are, I can just add them together to get C. So we know E was equal to 6.4 and F was equal to 3.6. So if I add those together, that's going to give me C. So C is going to equal to 6.4 plus the 3.6. And so if we add those together, we get C is equal to, what was that, 10? And we're done. So if you got a problem like this on Math Excel, you would just wanna be really careful entering your numbers into the right spot. Cause I'll see students who have the three numbers right, but they accidentally put like the 6.4 in the F box or they put the 10 in the E box. So just make sure when you're typing them in, you're putting them into the right variable. There, there's that one. So um, when you're doing these problems, they are going to ask you about the geometric mean. So that geometric mean is what we've been doing this whole time. So the geometric mean is setting up that proportion, that fraction that we're doing. So on Math Excel, they might say, find the geometric mean of four and 13. So what that's saying to do is we are going to write and solve a proportion. So remember this whole unit, we've been talking about what a proportion is, and that is when you have a fraction equal to a fraction. So a geometric mean is if I have that diagonal matching that we're trying to find. So if I know these two numbers, we would set four over x equal to x over 13. So we're looking for that matching diagonal right here to be the x's, and then the two numbers they give you to be the four and the 13. So that first example that we did, actually the first two examples that we did, here's example number two, um, set up that geometric mean where you're taking those two sides and you're finding it. Um, and then on the first example as well, where we did, x over 10 equals 18 over x. So you have that matching diagonal there, and that's going to be what the geometric mean is. So you use the geometric mean whenever you have a right triangle, it has to be a right one, so don't forget that part, and then when it's also being divided by that altitude. So we're looking for that shape where if I have a right triangle with that right angle right here, I'm drawing that altitude, which breaks it up into two smaller right triangles. And that's when we do the geometric mean. So when you see that wording on Math Excel, just know it's saying set up that proportion. So take the two numbers, one goes in the top, one goes in the bottom, and then X's go in the other diagonal. And then if you solve it, you're just timesing through. So like on this one, if we solved it, we would get X times X equals, I'll write it down here, X squared and then four times 13 for this diagonal, um, and that equals 52. And then you would need to get rid of that square by taking the square root, and so then those cancel. And then here you would just need to check and see, do they want a radical form? So remember, a radical means to leave the square root, or if they want a decimal. So if they do want a radical, check and see if there is a perfect square that goes into it, on this one, it happens to be four, which we just used to break it up. If I broke up 52, I can use that to be the square root of four times the square root of 13. The square root of four is equal to two. So the other way I could write this in radical form would be to be two times the square root of 13. Or if they want the decimal of that, you just throw it in your calculator and the decimal is equal to about 7.21 and then it was goes on with some more decimals. So it just depends on how they ask. Um, if they want radical form, again, that means they want the square root or if they want in decimal form. So just look at the directions on your assignment um, for what format to do.